well that process unfortunately is still very unstructured so the way it happened at least when i went in 2017 was that for every batch there's one popular facebook group where there are a lot of people so i was in that group where people had made a um, whatsapp group links the northeastern boys group was one so anyone who wanted male roommates you would join their whatsapp group and there was excel sheet going around where people had put in their name details like uh, food preferences some people have like do a budget preferences rent rent preferences how close you want to be to university so all these details are there and you could contact them and plan who you want to stay with that's how most people i know did it two things may happen you may move into a house where there's a person who's continuing the lease but the other roommates are leaving out then it's kind of a safe situation to be in because you know there's one person who's uh, you know who can vouch for the lease agreement the management and everything otherwise if you're a group of four people moving into a house together and two or three or all four of you are going on lease then it's much better to when the university recommends everyone recommends do not sign the lease when you are in india and don't even do any fund transfer while you are in india Boston is a expensive place, especially in terms of rent. That's one downside to being here. Yeah, so most people stay at a walking distance, but if not at a walking distance, there's very good transport options. For the rest of this country, compared to the other cities, when you travel, Boston has a pretty good public transport system. So I'm someone who had uh, even in India I have I've never stayed in a hostel or like by myself I was in Mumbai all my life where most of my family is so that's why transitioning here was a little difficult for the first two months or so for me it was a little tough but it doesn't take long to get used to it. Initially, I tried to minimize it, but I did eat out because I did not know how to cook much. But the thing is, like I said, food is expensive outside, and Boston is anyways expensive. And plus, when you're new, there is some inherent frugality in you because every time you see the cost on your bill, you convert it to rupees, and that really hurts you. So that's why I ended up cooking by myself. I just learned. I think the biggest culture shock is just that uh, coming from Mumbai, you are so used to seeing people and so used to uh, sounds around you at all given time. This is a very quiet place, and Boston is a city which is very busy. And even for a city, the roads are quite empty. After 9 p.m., very you won't see many people on the streets, and in the winter, it's really silent. I've seen some people have seasonal sickness. some people get, get really low in the winters because like it gets dark by 3 pm in the afternoon it just gets dark so the days are very short that's that's a difference you have to get used to when you're here your i20 has university start date and you can fly not earlier than 30 days before that So preferably try reaching as early as possible because most people have to find their own accommodation check out the place that you're paying for meet the broker see how far you're staying from the university what kind of a locality or and do some research about it so you should reach the university as early as possible I did attend the orientation and it's not really useful in any tangible way but i would still recommend people to attend it because you just figure out um, the general structure of the university what re- the what resources are accessible to you from the university you will find those out at the orientation like northeastern has an on campus police service called nupd northeastern university police department and we found that out in the orientation where they come and introduce themselves they have an app so you know if any issue or any danger you know who to call or what to do so that's why you should attend the orientation